Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Graham Moore. Wherever you are in the world, it's always good to be with you. Phoebe Francis on my right-hand side. Good morning to you, sir. How are you? Morning. Greetings to you, Graham and uh, Muhammad. Good to be here. Muhammad Shukri, it's always good to see you. How are good you? Good morning, Graham uh, and Phoebe from Bahrain. Good to see you guys again. Now, let's just have a little recap, So that's because some people might be listening or watching that haven't seen us before. Oh, my gosh. How are, is, is there anybody out there who hasn't seen us before? Oh, my God. <laughs> so I am a certified master of the Leadership Challenge. I have been a certified master of this wonderful program for over 10 years. I've delivered this program in 17 countries, I think, maybe more. And I obviously am passionate about the Leadership Challenge and the impact that wonderful leadership can have on organisations anywhere, large or small. We all agree on that, don't we? Yes, we do. We all know this. Yes, we do. And both of my colleagues, Muhammad and Phoebe, are trained facilitators to be able to deliver this wonderful program, the Leadership Challenge. Now, today, I happen to know, because we had a little chat about this earlier, that each of you has had an issue with an external organisation. Now, this is nothing personal. This is not about you trying to trying to get your money back on an, on a flight from an, an airline company that wouldn't help you. No, this is you in your professional capacity who has had an issue with another company because of what you were providing to them. Is that what we agree on? And how yeah. then does a leader deal with this? And we're calling this leadership or leaders and external issues. Now, Muhammad, you made the point quite rightly that hang on, well, he didn't you didn't when we were talking about it, but explain what you meant when we were talking earlier about the leader who has a different relationship with the external provider or stakeholder. Thank you, Graham. You see, um, when we are in our workplace, this is our home. This is our playground. I mean, we can control everything almost. And we know how to deal with even contingencies happening within the work environment. It's behind our walls. We can contain the issue if it happens. But then we are a business and we deal with customers and customers are outsiders. And to manage our relationships with them uh, relies on uh, how, uh, how well we actually export our services to them, how we deal with them, do we fulfill their needs. So sometimes that uh, you have role players within your organization representing you to do that service to that external customer. And sometimes they fall short of the customer's requirements. And guess who is going to be at a question? Not the person you sent, but you. And you as a leader uh, has, have to deal with this as a leader. So I hope I, I, I did well in portraying what the issue really is for our discussion. Let, let me frame it simply, but taking exactly what you've said. Well, almost exactly. We, in the in, in many organisations that we, we, we may be part of, we provide external services, correct? Yes. My, the, the question is, as a leader within the organisation that you are in, dealing with external clients, customers, organisations, does your leadership behavior leave you when you're dealing with a customer or a client? And I absolutely. Say, absolutely not. Be. Right? Absolutely not. You're agreeing with me on this, Phoebe? Yeah. So you're a leader wherever you are. Do we agree? Absolutely. Just that. In, in, when we have a leader and we have he has or she has followers and the team, we think, oh, good, that's a nice little unit. There's a leader and the team and it's all going really well and the leader does this and does that and does a wonderful behaviour and gets great results. But I, I, I think we all agree that 
when that leader is dealing with an external provider or stakeholder, that they don't abandon their leadership behaviours. Mm. Yes. Right? Actually, so, and, uh, can I jump in? In, in no, business, sure. we say, in business also, we say, even if you don't reach a deal or you do not solve the business conflict with the other party, the customer, at least you do not withdraw without maintaining the relationship. Absolutely. Relationship with the customer is more important than the deal. May, deal sometimes happens, sometimes don't happen. So in your attempt to solve the problem, make sure you are as a leader, you as a leader, you preserve, protect, and harness the relationship. This is part of business, and it's, it's very strong in negotiations. You lose the negotiation, but you don't lose the customer. You don't lose the relationship. Because of your behaviors. Absolutely. Yeah. And because of who you are. Phoebe, you've been quiet, but I'm now going to ask you, as because of what Muhammad has just said, and you are really very good in our conversations of linking the leadership challenge in specifically into the discussion. So let's start with the first practice and taking the point that Muhammad made about what you do with that other external person. So just explain to us what you would do to maintain that behaviour based on the first practice of model the way. What would you do? Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Graham. So when, when we were uh, discussing this topic, I was reflecting a challenge which I recently faced uh, on a project uh, where the client was unhappy to some extent, but happy to some extent. And when the client was giving me the feedback, um, I was thinking, what values should I demonstrate at this point of time? How can I be of help to be useful for them at this time in this moment? So that is where the model the way come to my mind. And, you know, what am I modeling here? How can I be, you know, leadership is all about relationship. How can I be of relationship with this stakeholder? So I was patiently listening with full attention, not saying a word and giving the space for the person to share what was, what was bothering them. And that actually, that listening process helped. Again, this is my perspective in which uh, they were willing to explore. Phoebe will let us look into other alternatives and work with uh, you in this process. So I think modeling the way, one of the first practice, what, what values are we modeling in our, in our interactions with our client, in our, with our stakeholders, whoever it is, whether it is external, whether it is internal? Am I modeling the way which is going to be of help or am I modeling the way which is going to be creating a wall in between? Yeah. yeah. So, so it is a tough one. Yeah, well, yeah. I, but but I, hopefully the people who will listen to us will see that there is an easy pathway. Let's just start with the first one now. In in the discussion that you have with your client, as we know, emotional intelligence is critically important. So one of the things you're going to do is empathize with the with the client and the issues that they have, quite simply. But we all know in the leadership challenge the four competencies of the so four characteristics rather of admired leaders. All the research has always consistently shows the top four are these are characteristics of admired leaders. So the leader in this situation should be demonstrating at least some of these four would be good. Honesty, got to be honest. And in this difficult situation, you can demonstrate honesty. Honest, inspiring. You know, there are things that you can say and do that where that other person who might be upset may just think later on, wow, he sounds really inspiring by what he's just done or said. Competent competent the person that that person should should be honest inspiring competent forward looking those are the top four characteristics of admired leaders and these have been the top four for the last 40 years so in your interaction with that other person you can do what we call build trust which is part of modeling the way 
as Muhammad said, in the negotiation situation, surely, Muhammad, if you'd miss out on the negotiation, the client would you would want the client to feel that they could trust you. Correct? Yes. So this is yes. not just trust with your with the state with your immediate family of, of team members, but anybody that you are interacting with as a leader, whether they're inside the organization or outside the organization. Yes. And uh, you know to elaborate on what you said, uh, Graham, if we look at Phoebe's case, okay, we will learn something very important. A leader is a leader, whether he is with his team or without his team. And it is very well known that the true uh, essence and integrity of people will show in the times of contingencies and difficult times. In normal times where things are going smoothly, everybody can be a nice, good leader, a kind leader. Everybody can demonstrate because he is at ease, at peace, no threats. Suddenly, you come across a threat. This is where it will crystallize and manifest whether you were practicing leadership for sure or not. In Phoebe's case, when he was bombarded with the client's dissatisfaction, his leadership came to the forefront and he listened fully, which is the, an important ingredient and element of empathizing with the customer. He didn't lose his temper. He didn't put his leadership on the side and says, this is time of emergency, no time for leadership. No, he listened fully. So this is what we are talking about. The times of external issues are, are also tests for our leadership. Remember, you always say, say this to us, do what you said you would do, you know, and it reads backwards. All right. Yeah, but also another just to reinforce the point that you're making. Tell me the hours of the day. Give me the, the, the actual hours of the day that you are a leader. That's a tough one. It's 24 hours. Yeah. Right? It's all the time. So that behaviour that you demonstrate as a leader is not just when you, as you were saying, Muhammad, it's not just when you're interacting with the people you are leading and everything is nice and smooth and, the, and we're sailing along really beautifully and then suddenly we get a storm blowing in from the west and the boat is being rocked very rigorously, a boat, if a boat could be rocked rigorously, um, the leadership behaviours still remain. The core of that person's behaviour remains the same. That person suddenly doesn't become distrustful. They don't abandon respect for others. They don't give. You start yelling and screaming because it's, the times are tough. Take me back to the good times. I'm okay with those. No, you are a leader twenty four seven, and those behaviours should be demonstrated, as I'm sure Phoebe demonstrated with his client. These situations should not change you as a leader when something negatively impacts on you from within or without the organisation or outside the organisation. Phoebe, tell me, have I made sense? Uh, you're muted. Phoebe, you're muted. It, it, it makes sense. And I was uh, actually thinking, you know, in this process, how can we inspire a shared vision with the client? What can we do differently? What kind of decisions I can take at that moment? What is the power and authority within me to help the client? Hmm. And look underneath what the actual situation is, how, it, how, it, how we can overcome that. What can we do with the client to help him or her to be, for example, successful in that person's role? as an external stakeholder. So these thought process actually came to my mind and I started exploring what can we do? And that led to a discussion of, uh, I, I think that that is one of the second practice, inspiring a shared vision together. What can we do differently for the organization? It can be, for example, the client may be bothered about uh, costing. The client may be uh, bothered about what her uh, senior stakeholders or his senior stakeholders may be thinking. So this may shift the thought process within the other party. So as 
as uh, leadership is everyone's business, what kind of leadership hats are we wearing at that point? Are we uh, helping to inspire growth? And I think that listening process helped to come out with other alternative options to think about. So that is my take. So what, you, you know, when, when we model that, uh, um, model the way, do what you do. do what and then, yeah. And, and then inspire that discussion, what can be done, be done differently. So this, this, this opens the pathway. So that is what I experienced in that uh, process. So, yeah, we, but we should, so in saying to them, what can we do differently? Of course, challenge the process, third practice. Mm. What can we do? Mm. What can we do differently? What, and, but you can also say, you know, I, there are things that I take away from what's just happened. And I, and I'm grateful to you for telling me what's going on. I'm grateful to you because I always, for every interaction, every business deal, always want to know how I can do it better. So what you've explained to me has been really positive for me so that I know that I can't let this ever happen again. So mm. it might be frustrating for you, and I absolutely understand that, but I can assure you that there's been significant learning from me about what should happen in the future. Challenge the process. Learn from mistakes. Right, this is this is critical, and and to talk to the person about this, and show them that you are learning as a result of this. You know, you're not going to say, "Well, it's your your fault," and well, what am I supposed to do? I blame you. No, not at all. Going back a little bit further, though, we talk about leadership being a relationship, and I would I would know in your situation. Phoebe, because I know you so well, that you would have built a relationship with this person, with the client, before this difficulty arose. Am I right? Yes. And therefore, we all know it's basic human relationship that if we have a really good relationship with someone, positive relationship, um, and and we know get to know them, the, and if there's any negative that's coming out of it, it's going to be easier to deal with it if we've got the relationship, if the trust has been built, if we if we have a relationship with them that says that they feel that they can understand us, but also that they know that we will listen to them, that's what leaders do. Rather than being defensive, leaders don't take on defensiveness, whether they're in their own office, their own department, their own organisation, or dealing with clients. They're going to move away from defensiveness, get to know the client's problem, and look for a solution Try and find ways, even if you say, look, we've never done this before. We've never had a situation like this. Your problem is this. I'm going to suggest I've never done this before, but I'm sure I can make it work if you're happy with it, that we can do this or this. How does that sound for you? This is challenging the process. Absolutely. Uh, I have a thought. I had a thought also while we are talking, just for this, this thought not to fly away before the end of this episode, I, I want to pin it even if it looks like uh, it comes in the middle. You see, one of the also uh, characteristics of an admired leader, which uh, which was uh, as the result of the leadership challenge um, uh, study is also, it's not one of the top four, but it's one of the favorite. It's called supportive. Now, while you are dealing with the issue with that external customer, someone else is watching. And that someone else is the one who messed up things. It's your employee who didn't uh, do a good job with the uh, customer. But he is also watching you. And you have a relationship with him or with her, right? So... The last thing you need to do, you should do, is to go and support your customer. Do whatever you can to support your customer and do nothing to support your employee. At the end of the day, a good leader, according to the study, supports the, the, the employee, whether he's right or he's wrong. All right? And they, they admire a leader who stands up for them. Okay? And not just throw all the blame on them. And I try to just uh, save myself, even at the cost of, um, you know, taking my employee to prison. I, I hope you 
are able as a leader not to lose sight of the two relationships. You once once this is done, or even during this is done, you uh, rehabilitate your employee, put him back on the track. And for this, you need to use again the fourth practice enable others to act it doesn't deactivate here it reactivates here so uh, at this point i think it's timely to 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 talk about this you should have uh, you should support your employee who did things wrong because you are a leader absolutely and again taking out the defensiveness you might even say to the client who's upset i i take on board everything you're saying one of the you know one of the other elements that's fits into this as well, of course, is the leader is going with a someone that, who's following, all their followers, the leader is going to listen to them because the people would know that when I go to talk to my leader, he or she listens to me and and they try to understand my problems and they, have, they, they can help me through those problems. So those things that I've just said can also apply to an org a, some, one in another organisation who's got a problem with you. You listen to them right when they're telling you the, what the problem is just as you would listen to someone who who was a, who, who's caused the problem or was a staff member you listen to them there are things that i want your customer to walk away from the discussion with saying wow it was a problem but he really listened to me wow it's, it was a problem but i know, know that he understands what went wrong wow i know that he was concerned that there was a problem and i know that there's going to be something that he will do about it in talking to and supporting he is team member who made the error, right? That kind of round. In fact, that uh, you know, there are statistics, marital statistics, that uh, couples who go through a catastrophe, which which is supposed to ruin the relationship, if they work together, you know, and bring things back on track, usually, more often than not, the relationship is stronger than it was before the catastrophe between the two couples. All right. So uh, sometimes this catastrophe between you and the customer is a good opportunity to build better relationships based on more transparent uh, conversations. And sometimes you both will reach to uh, find a shared vision, which it will identify uh, uh, areas you wouldn't if you didn't go through this. So it's really a win win situation also. Just Absolutely. to add on what you're not. Pippi, just allow me one comment. I know I'm talking too much, but allow me one comment. We, we've said this in other ways, in other situations, but when your client, in Phoebe's case, comes to you or brings up the problem, they are giving you a gift. We know that in certain parts of the world that we've all worked in, there are times when the client will not return your phone calls. And you will not know what the problem is if there was a problem. But they've given Phoebe a gift by saying, this is a problem. And Phoebe has addressed it really well. And in doing so, showing leadership behaviours is going to strengthen the relationship with that client. Right? We've got to be, we've really got to be thankful. This is a basic customer service tenet that we 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 must accept and be grateful for any negative comments that we are given so that we can make positive changes. If we don't know, we can't make changes. So how does that sit with you, Phoebe? No, that, 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 that's what I, I feel. You know, I'm, I'm feeling grateful that uh, this this happened. And, uh, and, and I, I think the client also felt, because as we mentioned, leadership is a relationship that they, they can freely, without any hesitation give a feedback which is which is also encouraging the heart to me you know someone is open and transparent sharing the feedback and trying to help yeah. you know it is also helping e each other to seeing and and like for example as as uh, Muhammad mentioned whoever we interact with our stakeholders we can also highlight it and share it with them this is what happened how can we address that when we have the engagement next time, which yes. will be a learning opportunity for the other party, which can be a, you know, like like feeding forward. What can we do together as we move in? How can we address these challenges which we have faced? And that can be 
in in a as giving feedback as a gift so that it encourages the heart and the the when, when we receive so that's what i felt you know receiving a feedback from a client and how sometimes leaders face it it difficulty so we we, we are trying to address that challenge in this conversation today so yeah that's my thoughts uh, graham yeah and that's really very good it's really really well made point that you, you know we we, we Otherwise, the relationship is not going to continue, is it? But if you, yeah. you, when they come to you with that negative issue, welcome that. And as I said at the start, your behavior doesn't change. You're still a leader. You're still a leader. You're not going to don your, your safety suit and, and try and defend yourself and when they throw arrows uh, and, and, and brick bats, as they sometimes refer to them as. You're not at all. You're going to, you're going to be trying to help the situation, being a leader so that when we move, they move, you or they move through the situation, they look for you for more opportunities to do work because you're a leader, you listen to them, you look for opportunities to overcome the situation, you discuss the issue with the people who were involved, you learned and your team learned from that mistake. And when we do this, we get far better results. Phoebe, please. And and again, I, I want to reiterate, you know, at that moment, listen to how can we, for example, we can ask this question, what can I do right now to help you to get resolved from this issue? Yeah. So, and, and listen to that from the, the external member. What, what that, what, what is the need underneath? And if we can get deeper into that, it may be Sometimes within your control, a decision which you can take, or sometimes you can go back to your organization to get, okay, this is what we can do in order to address that. And that will unravel the relationship and encourage the heart on both sides. Yep. And yep. the leadership relationship will be flourishing and thriving moving forward. So, gentlemen, do, Muhammad, do you, does this sit with you in terms of situations that have, may have occurred with you? Does what we've talked about fit comfortably for you? It's it's a big lesson. It's really a big lesson. I'm reminded of, um, maybe this is my final uh, uh, you know, input, uh, Stephen Covey uh, says, when it comes to people, fast is slow and slow is fast. Meaning, if you want to solve issues fast with people, then the results are very slow. I mean, supposedly if they happen. But when you go with people slowly, okay, patiently, empathically, empathetically, etc., as a leader should, then the results are fast. It's paradoxical, but it's true. They are not machines. They are not just another uh, small technical issue you can uh, fix through maintenance. They, these are people, whether the people work who work for you or the people you serve outside. Keep those relationships and relationships do demand being slow, careful and a leader. Well done, gentlemen. I am most grateful for this discussion, and I hope the people who are listening to us or watching us have picked up some ideas and suggestions as to what they may be able to do if they're confronted with this. And I hope that they remember that they are a leader 24-7. You you, you're not going to change. You're not going to be a different person if there is an issue with a client. No way should you be doing that. And I encourage people who are watching and listening now to join us on Facebook, Leadership Challenge Middle East. Join our Facebook group. We haven't been going all that long, but we are going and will be giving you, giving you valuable information and insights on how to become a better leader. Am I right, gentlemen? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. I wish you both the best of success in the week ahead, and I look forward to being with you again at this time next week. Have a great week. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.